almost a decade after pulling off the biggest upset in UFC history by beating then welterweight king George St. Pierre for his title, Matt Serra found himself face to face with an even more insurmountable challenge. He was risking his legacy, health, marriage, even his life when he faced off against the legendary force of nature known only as Nick the Tooth. Alright, so maybe it wasn't quite that serious. Maybe. But it was still a really funny feud. For those that are unfamiliar with Matt Serra, he is a former UFC fighter whose main claim to fame was handing George St. Pierre a very embarrassing TKO loss. And I'm a fan, but not at all because of his fighting. I just think the guy is straight up hilarious. Dude, what the f happened inside here, bro? You get you you play paintball on this thing? What is that? Look at that. What is that? Did a pigeon get let loose in this thing? Did you shake a. Did you jerk off all over your He's one of those old school Italian dudes from New York that's just naturally funny without even really trying. Like this one guy here put it, he's the Joe Pesci of MMA. Another thing you need to know about Matt is that he's the type of guy that just refuses to take any. You're bringing up Michael Pereira. I think the guy's his fun. Who? Uh, Piero? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Pereira, don't uh, you, you're gonna fix my. And as you can see, Dana White likes him a lot, so when it came time to film the show back in 2015, Dana White looking for a fight, Matt Serra was one of the people that he brought on board. The other person was his childhood friend Nick Gallo, aka Nick the Tooth. Why did they call him Nick the Tooth? Because he's messing the tooth. He is a true renaissance man. He's done a little bit of everything, from music to business, he even won a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu championship. He has a very distinct look and voice, and he's pretty much the comic relief of the show. For fans of Jackass, he's like a very subdued Steve-O. At the point the show was being filmed, he was a couple of years deep into practicing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he had this ongoing bit where he would challenge professional fighters to Jiu-Jitsu matches. Now being that him and Matt were on the same show, you can probably guess where this eventually ends up. So on paper, the premise of the show was Dana, Matt, and the Tooth going around the world and searching for the next great fighter at these smaller promotions. But really, at the heart of it, the show was about the three doing these different types of activities that would often bring these slapstick comedy type of results. Hang on, wait one second. Oh! Oh, that sucks! Oh! That did not work out like that! So initially, Matt and the Tooth got along very well. They had this cool little adversarial dynamic where they would play pranks on each other and break each other's balls while Dana stood back as the middleman like, Hey, these guys, these guys, look at these guys. Uh, these guys are crazy. They're the wildest and craziest guys I know. But there were two incidents that happened on the show that led to Nick getting really butthurt at Dana, but more so Matt Serra, and then leaving the show and being replaced by Dean Thomas. The first of which was his jujitsu match against Matt Serra. As I said earlier, challenging professional fighters to jiu-jitsu matches was Nick's whole bit. And when they eventually did get to roll, Nick unsurprisingly badly got his ass whooped. Matt and Nick start to grapple. I mean, it looked like if you grappled with your three-year-old daughter, she would have done a better job at staying out of submissions than Nick did. I did not even ask him. Now after it was over, judging from his personality and his role in the show, everybody just assumed that he would laugh it off, but Nick got legitimately upset. And after the show was done filming, he went on Bruce Buffer's podcast and laid out his list of complaints. Things like feeling blindsided, Matt going too hard, and wearing his school's name on his rash guard. The first thing I said, and actually kept it in there, was me going, dude, I'm not even warmed up yet. But the real reason that I was upset was because one, I wasn't told it was going to happen and everybody else knew it was going to happen. And I'm not cool with that. And I wasn't cool with that. And number two, I was wearing the rash guard. And that was the first thing I said to Matt for my school at the art of jujitsu. Now, you have to understand that in jujitsu culture and also in MMA culture, camps and teams are a big deal. I didn't start it. I didn't make it up. And my biggest concern was that people were going to see me in, a ju in an art of jiu-jitsu uh, rash guard, and they were going to take that video, and they were going to cut it up, and it was going to go around the web with clickbait saying, look, Sarah jiu-jitsu is better than the Mendez jiu-jitsu. And guess what? It happened. So Matt Sarah, being who he is, a guy that takes no
decided to go on his own podcast that he co-hosted with Jim Norton, UFC Unfiltered, and just rip Nick the Tooth to shreds. How would you like if my professors, you know, rolled with one of your purple belts and, and, and did that to him? And I go, if one of my purple belts put on blast your professors, my guy's no etiquette. First of all, it wouldn't happen. And if it did happen, I'm going to beat their worse than your professors because I teach my guys respect and I teach them etiquette because that's a huge part of martial arts. It's part of life. Right. It's not just about who could tap who. So that's where I'm coming from. Back when he said, he said this, oh, this, I'm not going to let that air because it's going to bring shame to my instructors. I'm like, yo, I don't know how close, he's close with Dana. I know I'm close with Dana, but does this guy hold that kind of power not to have something aired? And this and something that he initiated you know what i'm saying it's right. not like i go hey guys i got a great idea for this show i could i could beat up on the tooth that's yeah. dude that's not sure. me it was his idea sure. it backfired on him and uh and it didn't work out his way then he just doesn't want to be shown i mean the guy it, that that's like pathetic so uh so i listened to the guy on the thing today and he's talking to bruce buffer and uh the producer of that show and he's like oh well listen of course why would i get upset if you know a black belt submitted me i just get a you know you know, man, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't, first of all, I wasn't warmed up. You heard, you hear me say, the first thing you hear me say on that episode of when we were at that academy is, uh, the first thing you hear me say is, hey, uh, hey, we're not warmed up. The first thing he said is after I'm getting done doing the technique, you hear me go to the guy, all right, guys, anything else? You hear the tooth in the background go, let's roll. Right. That, and, but it's not my, I didn't tell the guy to wear a freaking rash guard of his school or anything like right. that. So, I mean, the guy wore a rash guard. That, the guy knew exactly what was going on. If you see us rolling, he's going inverted. He's trying all his that I'm slapping away. And of course, what happens is what we all expect to happen. And I just did what I want with the guy. So, but again, it's not a big feather in my cap, dude. I got some stuff I did in my life and that's not one of them. And that likely would have been the end of it. But Nick was also very upset about another incident where him, Dana and Matt got tased. Three, two, one. Ah! Ah! Please stop it! Ah! Please stop it! Ah! I mean, some of us handle it better than others. <laughs> so they flipped the switch on this thing, and Nick the Tooth starts screaming like a f girl. <laughs> Nick felt very embarrassed by his overly dramatic reaction <laughs> and tried to claim that the method of delivery of the shock was somehow unfair to him. I took it from my hand all the way to my other ankle. Dana got tased. He took it from his hand to his hand. So essentially only his upper body. And he was so upset by this that he ended up blowing up on Dana at an Agent Orange concert. Dana comes back, gets in my face. We start having an argument about it. And I explain my position. And I'm like, dude, just admit it. Just admit that you did it. And I'll stay on the show. Needless to say... We kept arguing and I finally just put up my hand and walked away. I said, I'm done. And that's basically what went down. And it's kind of funny because the whole issue stemmed from Nick feeling like he wasn't being taken seriously. While everyone else was just going off how he was presenting himself and assuming that he'd be in on the joke. Like, dude, you're deep into your 40s, you're missing a tooth and you have wild, crazy hair. Of course, you're going to be the guy that loses the match and makes a fool of himself. And of course, you're going to be the guy that yells like a girl. You're the comedic relief. That's your whole role in the show, just like Matt was put into several positions where his weight and stature were used as a punchline. And what's even crazier is that people liked him. He could have been a recurring character on Dana White's blogs or shows or even maybe gotten his own spinoff show. He fumbled a pretty big opportunity over getting butthurt and what was the point? The footage is already out there anyway. And as I was making this video, I got kind of curious of whether or not he made amends with either Dana or Matt. So I went to his Instagram and it looks like he follows Dana, but not Matt. So he might still feel some type of way over what went down there. And that's about it for this video. If you want to reach out to me with any questions or suggestions, you can contact me through email or Instagram. And you know, lately, I feel like I've had a real spiritual awakening. I've been really working on myself and I'm going to leave you with a quote that's been absolutely life-changing for me. In order to understand this, 